Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about doing green screen photography using Primat Event for Aperture with Zenfolio. This is a great combination if you're doing green screen work, especially live events, and then using Zenfolio to let your customers select and print the photos. We're actually going to be discussing a couple different workflows, tethered shooting and processing live, and then post-production processing, where the images are keyed out after the shoot. Primat also works in Photoshop, so let's switch over to Photoshop and go over some Primat basics. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop, and we're not going to go too in-depth into all of the tools within Primat. Uh, there's plenty of great tutorials over on digitalanarchy.com that can go through all that stuff in much more detail. We're just going to kind of skim over some of the basics of using it in Photoshop. And the first thing we want to do in Photoshop is turn this into a regular layer because background layers cannot accept transparency. So if we're in Photoshop and we want to have transparency, uh, we would need to make it a regular layer. Then come up to the filter menu and do Digital Anarchy Primat. And you can see by default, Auto Mask is already working for us. The auto mask is what allows Primat to automatically key out the subject. It analyzes your photo, identifies the green in the image, and then automatically removes that, does a little bit of color correction, and leaves you with this. It tends to be much more effective on head and shoulder shots and three-quarter lengths. If you have the subject actually standing on the green screen, auto mask is a little bit less effective. But if it turns out not to be perfect, we always have the manual controls over here to help improve problem shots. Now, if you have green spill on your subject, which we don't in this case, we have color correction tools over here to help remove any green contamination or blue contamination that results from the subject being too close to the green screen, having the green screen too bright, and basically turning that into a big green light that's now casting green light into the image. And that's what the remove spill controls are all about. In the next section over here, we have our backdrop section. And this allows you to add in different backdrops. This is critical if you're in Aperture because it's the only way to add in backdrops. And we'll talk a little bit more about that very shortly. But if you're in Photoshop, this is not as critical. You can always add in backdrops within Photoshop. And in this case, I'm not going to worry too much about it because we're going to talk a lot about this section a little bit later. And since we're in Photoshop, we'll add in the backdrops actually in Photoshop itself. And here we have the Move section. This allows us to position, rotate, scale the subject, the background, the whatever overlay we might have. If we have some text down here that says Dance 2012 or something like that, that was what a uh, overlay would do. And this just allows us to move everything around, scale things up, and arrange them to our liking. Now, the view options up here allows us to see our composited image. Uh, the mask allows us to see the mask. And we want to have our subject being pretty much completely white, the background being solid black. And then you want to have some shades of gray around the edges to give it some transparency. Because in situations like hair, you don't want that to be completely opaque. You want to have some transparency. So whatever background that you eventually put behind her was going to show through her hair. And of course we can take a look at what the original image looks like and then go back to our composite mode. Now if we're in Photoshop, like I said, we're going to add in the backdrop a little bit later. So those are the critical pieces to Primat. We're going to talk a little bit more about all these different options, but I just kind of want to do a general overview very quickly and show you that it does in fact work in Photoshop. We're mostly going to be focusing on Aperture today, but since we are in Photoshop, we can click OK and see what happens in that application. And you can see that because we have a layer that accepts transparency, we now have our subject keyed out on a layer, and we can go ahead and add in any backdrop that we want. And in this case, just to, be, just to make things easy, I'm just going to render out some clouds, throw that behind her and we can see what that's going to look like with a different backdrop. 
So that's great. So now let's jump back over to Aperture and see how things work there. All right, so I've got Aperture open. I've got four lovely ladies uh, against green screens. And we're going to add a couple more images here. One of the great things about Aperture is the ability to do live shoots. Aperture has a tethering feature, and that allows us to take advantage of that. And as the photographer shoots images, they can apply Primat directly to those images as they come in. You can key it out, add in the background, and then you can either print those images out for the client, or you can shift those over to Zenfolio, and then have the client at some later date choose the photos they want, the package they want, and get those printed out. Now this opens up a really cool workflow, which we'll talk a little bit about later, and that is you can have the photographer doing the shooting, and as one shot comes in, that can be uploaded to Zenfolio. An assistant on a different machine can then pull up Zenfolio, interface with the client, and take their order right there while the photographer is setting up to do the next person. And so it's kind of a neat workflow, and we'll talk a little bit about that once we get into the Zenfolio section of this tutorial. But right now, let's talk about tethered shooting and how that works. So the first thing to do is go up to the File menu, go to Tether, and Start Session. You can set the name. You can see that it's going to be importing into this folder right here. And you can tell that by the little camera icon. You can set up a variety of metadata, including the name, of course, and how the different shots are going to be named. In this case, it's a custom name with a counter, so it's going to be Primat plus 001, Primat 002, etc. And so all this should work just fine. We can start the session. And this is going to bring up our HUD, the heads up display. And you can see the camera that I'm using. You can see the destination that's going to. Then we have this nifty button down here called Capture. And once we click that, that's going to take a shot with the camera. And that's going to input the shot that I just took into my library. I can now go up to Photos and do Edit with Plugin and go to Primat. And this will launch Primat Event. And let's squash the interface down a little bit. And you can see that AutoMask has already keyed out the image and has done a pretty nice job of doing that. You can see that I already have some backdrops loaded into my backdrop section. And in fact, I have a couple of them there. So I can easily switch between these two to see which one that I like better. And in this case, I think I'm going to go for the brown one. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can use the Move section if we want to move things around a little bit and scale it up. Say I'm not crazy with it being quite so centered. We can move things around. We can then scale that up so that the lighting sort of tapers from a little bit lighter over to darker. So that gives us a nice background, and we can go ahead and click OK, and this will take us back out to Aperture. Now, one thing I should note is that you have to have a background in here. If there is no background, for example, say if we turn off Render BD, you will just see a gray background. And if there is no background, this is what you will have. You will simply replace the green background with a gray background. Probably not what you were going for. As nice of a color as gray is, generally we want something a little bit more interesting back there. But because Aperture does not support transparency, so if we're in Photoshop, on a transparent layer, we can just render this out to transparency and then drop in any backdrop that we want at a later time. In the Aperture version, we have to have the backdrops that we want to use in the backdrop section. So I'll turn Render BD back on, Render Backdrop. And then this image will get rendered back out to Aperture, and we'll be good to go. The nice thing about the backdrop section is you can have as many different backdrops in here as you want. So if you want to give your client say a selection of six different backdrops. You can just have all six of them in here, select the one that the client wants, and then just hit OK, as we will do right now. Now you'll see when this is done that Aperture creates a version of the original file. So the original file is untouched, 
but we just have this version now that has been keyed out and has a backdrop applied to it. And this is what we're going to work on. Now, if you're doing a live event, you might want to just print this out. Just go to the Aperture Print dialog and print this out to whatever printer you have going. And that way you can take the photo and actually just hand it to the client as they walk away. But you can also take this and send it over to Zenfolio, courtesy of the Export and Aperture to Zenfolio option. But one of the things I have to do first is go over to my Zenfolio website. And we're going to create a new gallery and name that gallery Green Screen Event 1. And so we now have this new gallery, and we're going to export this image to that gallery by going again to Export, Aperture to Zenfolio, selecting the gallery that I want to have it in. And maybe just for speed purposes, we're going to have this at half the original size. We might be just sending this over to Zenfolio so that the client can take a look at the image and then place an order. And we can always go back and re-upload the full-size image at a later time. And just for the sake of making this as fast as possible, that's what we're going to do. And so you can see that we select what format we want, what size we want to be at, the name, and then we click Export. And that will save this image out of Aperture, and then upload it to Zenfolio. And then next time we go to Zenfolio, you will see that if I double click on my green screen event gallery, my image is already there. So that's super cool. And if I have an assistant helping me out, she can now go ahead and have the client come on over and select the image and start ordering prints. And the photographer can go right back to Aperture without having to worry about the selling part and move on to either the next picture or the next client. And so now I can go ahead and click on Capture once again. This will go ahead and import my second shot, which I now can just apply Primat to. Go to Edit with Plugin, Primat. And again, Auto Mask will already have done its work. Keyed out the background. Let's change the background. We'll put the more silky background behind her this time and then just go ahead and click OK. And you can see how this really creates a great workflow for live events. As you can very quickly come in here and take the shot, apply Primat to it, put in the new background, and then go ahead and print it or upload it to Zenfolio. So it's a very fast workflow. And it's really designed for people doing live events or situations where you need a very fast turnaround on the images that you're taking. So that's the tethered workflow. Again, we're pretty excited about it. It's a pretty cool way of doing this type of photography. But now let's talk a little bit about batch processing. Both Aperture and Photoshop can batch process. Photoshop, you would just create an action, go through the Automate menu, and do a batch process that way. Aperture actually gives you a couple different options for batch processing, which is a lot more flexible than what Photoshop offers. Uh, Aperture actually offers sort of a hybrid batch processing model where you can look at each image, make some adjustments, and then process all those adjustments on all the photos at the very end. So let's go take a look and see what that looks like. So I'm going to select all four of these images. Now you'll see it shows the first photo with auto mask applied. So it automatically drops out the background, imports th this new background. And so it looks pretty much the same as we saw in the other examples. The big difference here is up at the corner here, we have these arrows. And the arrows allow us to go through the rest of the images that we have selected. So if I go ahead to the next image, I'll just click on this next arrow. It'll load this up. We can change out the background for this one. We can then go to the next one. 
We can grab the spill minus tool and get rid of a little bit of the green spill that's in her hair. And so on and so forth for all of the different images that we have selected. And then we can click on OK and it will process all four of those images at the very end. Now you can see that if you have, say, a hundred different images, this really speeds up your workflow. It allows you to take a look at each individual image, make some adjustments to it, add in a different background for each one, and then process them all out at the end. So if you have, say, 100 or 500 images, that processing time is going to add up. And so at that point, you can either do the processing while you're at lunch or after you've left or switch to a different application on the machine and get other work done. And so it can be a huge time saver in the sense that all that processing, you know, you can just set that up to render once you're ready to go to lunch or leaving for the day or what have you. You know, you don't have to sit there and wait for each image to process. And so it's a very powerful way of working. Now, of course, if I select my images and I do the same thing, let's go back into Primat. Now, if I have multiple images selected and I just click OK, this will do the same thing as Photoshop batch processing. It'll just apply Primat with the background that you have selected to all of the images. And that's essentially how Photoshop works. It just works on a folder of images. You don't really get the option of going through and looking at each one beforehand. It just processes them in mass. And if I just open Primat up and click OK, that's exactly what's going to happen. But if I make use of my arrows over here and go through each image, then that's where the power of Aperture's batch processing really shows up and allows you to add in different backgrounds and make color corrections and so on and so on. So I'm going to cancel. And now that we've keyed out all of these images, I'm going to grab them all and upload them to Zenfolio. So select Aperture to Zenfolio again. And I think we'll do 50% of the original size. And then just go ahead and click Export. So it's a fast and easy way of getting our images into Zenfolio. And again, as I was mentioning before, if you're doing this live, you could just have an assistant operating the Zenfolio machine while you, the photographer, are just going ahead and shooting the next client. But either way, we have all the power of Zenfolio. We can select our galleries. We can, of course, set up the print ordering, assign a price list to this. We can select it and invite visitors to it. So if we know this is for a particular client, we can just invite them to view it and order prints directly from the gallery. If I double click on it, we can see that we have all of these photos uploaded now. And either we or the client can go ahead and start making orders. Now, of course, Zenfolio has a great help section, a help center over here. So if you have questions specifically about Zenfolio, that's a great place to go. But we really just wanted to go through a tutorial on using Primat Event to shoot a live session, importing those images into Aperture, processing them, and then sending them over to Zenfolio and just showing that workflow and just showing how easy it is. So I hope you will download Primat Event from digitalanarchy.com. There's also Primat Chroma Key for Photoshop, which would have a slightly different workflow, but pretty similar. But either way, it's a very powerful solution for doing green screen work. And if that's something that interests you, please check us out. Again, the website is digitalanarchy.com. And of course, we have lots of other tutorials on Primat up there, as well as our other products. We have a great selection of Photoshop and Aperture plugins for doing all sorts of different photography-related work. So please check it out, and thank you for joining me.